Oh my God, I got good news today. With my VA medications and drama, you know I've been going through this drama. They did allow my primary to order the T3 for me. Ah, so I don't have to try to do, you know, black market trying to get it, my medication. Um, so she did, uh, they did allow her to order it. So I have my medication now. I don't have to worry about it anymore, thank God. Um, <laughs> and Mr. Mr. Mickey is, is crashed out over here again. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's still young. He needs his sleep, so he's over there crashed. And, um, oh my God, I am just happy that they gave this to me. Now they had partial in here and then they sent the rest in the scraping bottle this little bit <laughs> little bit um so i'm going to uh well i'll keep these separate and then i'll put them in my other one easier to do but i did get my medication um i did give her that uh study that I found that 9 out of 10, she um, sent that to the VA as well, um, to the pharmacy, so that um, I could get my medication. Because the endocrinologists, they just don't, um, you know, they just go, well, if you have T4, that's all you need. You don't need any more, and that uh, study that I provided proves it wrong. And that's what you have to do with the VA, I'm telling you. Um, when I went to, to get my um, service connection, disability, etc., they declined it the first time. And then I found the study that um, I had very severe PTSD. And they said, well, you've had prior, prior trauma, so it's not the VA's fault. So they denied my claim the first time. Well, I found a study, and it was their own study that said, if you've had prior trauma and you have secondary trauma, you will absolutely develop PTSD. So I took it in, I went in and said, here's your own study. And uh, at that point, then they had to uh, approve. They had to approve it because I had in hand their own study. But this is what the VA does. Uh, for those that don't know, I used to know somebody that worked in that type of office, and they told me, the minute you get your disability rating, they have one half of the room that gives the disability rating and the other half tries to find a loophole to take it away. Yeah, that's true. That's what I was absolutely told by somebody that works in that department. Um, so if you're dealing with the veterans department, um, you have to go with the study in hand that proves them wrong. And then, and only then, will they listen and uh, you know, provide what it is that you are needing. Um, so that's how I got my medication, finally. It wasn't through the endocrinologist because that was never gonna happen, okay? It was through my primary and I came in with study in hand and said, look, I'm already taking it. And yes, it's helping. Without it, I was laid out on the couch. I couldn't move. So um, she sent that along with the study that I provided for her. And it was a big detailed study. Um, and she zipped that along to them. And then again, study in hand, they can't deny it and say it doesn't exist any longer. Um, so. 
I finally did get my medication. Now, again, if you're dealing with the VA, you have to be your own advocate. And thank God, all I can say, I'm really happy that I have the primary that I have, that she was willing to try that. She says, I don't know if they'll approve it, but we'll try it. And uh, today I got my medication in hand, and so she was able to get that through. So now I can rest and relax and I'll be able to go in the van on my trips because I have my medication, because without it, you can't function. You have to have it, um, because the T3 regulates so much in your body, and it's way, way stronger than the T4. So if you've had a total thyroidectomy, you have no thyroid at all, or you've had that radiation that's killed it, you really, the T3 is so important to have. Um, so anyway, on that note, I'm going to leave that here. I don't know. How is he sleeping? He's got his neck cricked. I don't know. <laughs> how, how can that be comfortable? It, Mickey, are you, comfortable? are you comfortable, little man? He's got his head turned all the way. Get, he looks like he's a part of the exorcist. I don't know. But apparently he finds it comfortable. So, so okay. Uh, good luck with Mick. <laughs> and yeah, his name is going to stay Mickey. And I just call him Mick Mick for short. And he does have kind of an Irish-Scottish temperament. Okay. Now, my mother's maiden name is Paxton, which is, you know, on the borderlands between Scotland and England. But, um, so that's interesting. Uh, although it says my DNA comes from, like, Switzerland, German, France, all of that area, for the most part. But my mother's maiden name is Paxton, which is... Um, really by the uh, English-Scottish border, and then I guess they went up to, uh, was it they went up to Ireland and then left to come to the U.S.? And my grandfather was still in, uh, still in Pennsylvania, and that's where they came. I've got a big, huge genealogy book on Paxton um, in there. And they say all the Paxtons descend from a single ancestor, so we're all connected somewhere. That's why I was so disappointed when we had that guy in Texas, Paxton, that is such a criminal. I was like, ah, <laughs> really, really, that's disgusting. Anyway, so, um, yeah, I'm just going to let him chill and uh, get ready to do the cards. I wanted to start out with doing the, um, you know, wisdom from the universe. We'll see what it has to say today. So I'm looking forward to that. And I'm just going to let little Mick Mick over here uh, have his rest. Little Mickey boy. I don't know how he can sleep like that. He's got himself curled up like this. It does not look comfortable. Anyway. So on that note, I'm going to leave this here, but thank God that came through and I have the medicine that I need to function, <laughs> to function. Um, so on that note, I'm going to leave this here and thanks for tuning in and I'll see you online.